One of the most interesting of these harvests, because it shows the trend, is soybeans. For every million cars produced, 600,000 bushels are used annually for the manufacture of enamels and for plastics, electrical parts and similar parts. But while scientists and engineers are important to the development and perfection of new ideas, new things in transportation, it is equally important that motor cars have a style and beauty that do more than please the eye. An appearance that expresses swift transportation with comfort and safety. And it is here that today's designs were developed. It is here that tomorrow's designs are being planned. After principles are thoroughly tested, they are embodied in experimental models built in the laboratories. And the next step is the weather tunnel, the only full-size weather tunnel in the United States, where the world's worst weather in all conceivable combinations is created to order. The findings in this weather laboratory the first of its kind to be built expressly for scientific research into motor design and operation, are checked with actual road conditions on one of the world's largest test tracks, where today's cars, while still in the experimental stage, were driven thousands of miles at high speed, where they were tested on brick paving, checked for safety on wet asphalt, pounded over cobblestones to prove stamina, and over rough, uneven roads to make certain that all factors contributing to comfort have been improved. Here, too, the cars are checked and double-checked with sound recording and proved in action to be quiet beyond all comparison. They are checked for safety, for durability, for economy, for comfort, to the end that new ideas, new things, new materials in today's Lincoln Lincoln Zephyr, Mercury, and Ford cars and trucks are thoroughly tested. For here, nothing is approved until it is proved. But what are some of the things that draw people here from all over America, from all over the world? Almost any large industrial operation is spectacular. But what is there here that differs advantageously, is unique, that explains an outstanding ability in this industry to offer more for less? Why does this plant produce its own electricity? Electrical power can be purchased. Why does this plant have huge blast furnaces to produce its own iron? Iron can be bought. Blast furnaces need coke, and coke too can be purchased. Why does the Rouge plant make its own coke? Why does this one plant produce gas, steel, plastics, plate glass, and even many of the tires with which its cars are equipped? These things can be bought, are bought, by most all manufacturers. Why are there company-owned iron mines, coal mines, and rubber plantations? Why a fleet of ships, 14 locomotives, and over a thousand freight cars? First, it is to acquire the experience and knowledge necessary to increase quality and reduce costs through better methods. And this valuable information is free and has contributed to all industry through the years. Second, these many and diversified manufacturing operations here keep each one upon an actual cost basis, not cost plus profit on many individual parts of the car. So there is just one profit on the finished product when it rolls off the line. These things are the mainspring of a mechanism that is unique. They cultivate an idea and harvest an ideal. The idea is to find more efficient, less wasteful ways to use nature to make men more free. The ideal is always to find means of spreading the results of scientific achievement more widely among mankind. So great is an idea, so mighty is an ideal, that within half a man's lifetime, a tiny workshop has grown into the world's largest industrial development that is continually improving, creating, and contributing not only its products, but its methods, so that other industries have benefited because many Ford methods have been made available to them. Here during the last year, 
$34 million have been spent as a part of a permanent program for progress, founded upon faith in tomorrow. It is faith that business could be worse and will be better, confidence that is found whenever you find enlightened industrial management. Here, for example, is a confidence that has built a power plant that produces enough electric power to meet the domestic needs of the city of Chicago. A plant which daily uses hundreds of tons of coal, as well as 31 million cubic feet of gas, and enough water to supply the cities of Detroit, Cincinnati, and Washington. 2,500 tons of iron ore are used daily, ore from company-owned mines transported in company-owned ships. Tons of silica sand, soda ash, salt, limestone, charcoal, and cullet are consumed daily in the manufacture of safety glass in a huge plant where there is a polishing table so long it was constructed to conform to the curvature of the earth. Thousands of tires are now being manufactured in the world's most advanced tire factory, and the volume of production will increase as rubber becomes available from Ford-owned plantations on the Amazon. Every 24 hours, these batteries of coke ovens produce 3,475 tons of coke from coal to be used mainly in the blast furnaces, in the melting of iron ore. But many other products are recovered or produced in this process to be used or sold and to save at every point of manufacture so that these savings may serve to give more quality at less cost. For example... The thick, brown, gaseous smoke that used to overhang the old beehive-type coke ovens is here carried to a byproducts plant through overhead pipes where a number of washing, condensing, and recovering operations produce from it 45,000 gallons of coal tar used throughout the plant as fuel, 100,000 pounds of ammonium sulfate, a fertilizer which Ford markets through its dealer organization, 11,850 gallons of light oil, and by mixing 25% refined light oil with 75% standard gasoline, 42,000 gallons of motor benzol are produced every 24 hours, which finds a ready sale in the gasoline filling stations throughout the Detroit area. From the coke ovens, the coke is carried by conveyors to the blast furnaces, where the idea of efficiency to cut waste begins with the recovery of the flue dust that is caught and centered for melting. And here, during full production, no pigs of iron are cast, only to be subsequently remelted. The iron in its molten state is transported directly to the world's largest foundry, where technical advances in the casting of metal are being made regularly, and where the V8 engine block is cast in one piece. Other ladles filled with molten iron from the blast furnaces go directly to the open hearth furnaces, where steels of many kinds are produced. More than 63 different kinds of steel are used in the manufacture of the Ford car. 38 for the cars themselves, and others for dyes and tools. And meanwhile, an industry within an industry is devoted to other savings that are passed on to Ford and Lincoln buyers in the shape of better cars, sharing in the profits from these efforts. For example, waste paper that accumulates at the Rouge plant is made into tons of paper used for packing and other production purposes. Every scrap of wood, of rubber, of metal, string, cloth, or leather is used, no matter how small it may be. Waste oil that inevitably pollutes a river flowing close beside any large factory is here reclaimed, 600 gallons of it a day, and used for oiling roads and for fuel. The dust from grinding wheels contains metal particles of the parts smoothed on the wheels. Even this dust is reclaimed, and it yields tons of metal, 